I've sketched out the beginnings of my um, scene here and I just wanted to flip the camera and show you. I've started to sketch out my scene. I've got a girl leaning against a rail um, just staring out into the ocean. So this is where I'm going to get started. I am grabbing a bunch of colors. I've got sandy blonde, cake batter, crinoline, layer chocolate, bohemian blue, white swan, prairie gray, and skeleton key. I'm going to see how this all blends together um, as I get started. I'm going to start building my color here. So I'm starting with a light. You can build either way. You can start light and you can start dark. You're just building them in the opposite direction. Actually, I'm thinking I was going to put legs here, but I think I might just put the skirt to the bottom. It'll be a little easier. So again, I'm just cutting my light colors in. I've got Bohemian Blue now. This is kind of the darkest of dark. I'm going to be using the layered chocolate as well. Now I'm beginning to layer the Sandy Blonde and the Bohemian Blue. They're still a little bit wet. I have a kind of a drier brush and I'm just quick wispy blending. Remember you can always add a little bit of water to your brush. I have just a little, um, <laughs> this was a used um, like appetizer frozen um, container, whatever you want to call it. And um, I always use these for palettes so I don't have to throw them away and they work really great. So I just sprayed a little bit of water into here. Um, most of these are acrylics and are dried for life so I don't worry about them blending. Degas really liked to block his color so he was a master at color blocking so um, I am achieving that same look here by applying a large area of just, you know, the lighter the dark and then blending the two together. And then sometimes when you have leftover paint on your brush, you can just dip the tip in the water and um, get it wet. And then you can kind of reactivate the paint and blend, so it's kind of fun. cake batter out now. Just adding in and blending the skin tone. And then I'm going to add a little bit to the dress to keep the flow. My brush is just a little bit um, wet. I keep kind of dipping it into the water just to help this blend a little bit more. White swan now. This is the back of her head. She's wearing a little cap. I just have the littlest of bits of prairie gray on here. A tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. And I'm just going to shade in the top of her hat.
some prairie gray to my brush just to kind of start uh, building up this railing. I have on some of the layered chocolate and I'm just kind of edging the railing. And the layered chocolate and I'm just adding some suggestions of creases or folds. Okay, I think she's really beautiful. I love the flow in the fabric. I do need to figure out a solution for rails, not rails, but like poles to hold up the railing. Um, I don't want to make it into a wall because that's going to take away from the beachy feel of it. So. I need to come up with a solution for that. So that is the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to let this dry completely. And then I'm going to come in and um, figure out some poles. I decided to do a kind of a driftwood look on my posts. So I've got weathered wood, prairie gray, the layered chocolate, and then I'll kind of clean up some of the edges with um, the apothecary and the um, sandy blend. So I'm just layering this, um, you know, how driftwood or um, just bark in general has lots of different colors, lots of different layers. So I'm just adding lights and darks in different little places, creating a little bit of texture. This is definitely up for individual interpretation, so you guys can kind of put in whatever you want. Making the railing a little bit thicker. I'm adding one more pole on each side just to help give this a little bit of balance. 